Welcome back! This is the second half of the Radial Vault Steel videos. For vaults 1 through 6, check this earlier video. This video focuses on the last four vaults, the four special vaults. This one is the kitchen vault. The procedure is the same, exactly the same for these first two arches because they're the same as the larger two arches from the previous videos. However, this last arch is quite a bit wider, so I was glad to have some extra help to position it. I tried welding too soon after that rain, and I got quite a shock, so let's put the welder away. Menards was supposed to deliver some supplies, but they never showed up. Eventually I figured out that they had dropped them off at a house about half a mile away, so I drove my skid steer out there to get it. Back to work. My father's torching some holes in the steel I-beam so that we can bolt some wood to it. Now I'm drilling the holes for the radial rebar. They're not random, I had used a piece of rebar to mark the locations. Now I clamp the steel arches at the right places and then rest the rebar on the clamps. Then I weld. Move the clamps, place new pieces, weld again. This radial rebar is really the easiest part. Here's a perfectly good opportunity to ask you to like, subscribe, set the bell for notifications, and share this video with any friends who may be interested. Then I mark the indices along the radial rebar and measure the length of the hoops from rib to rib. Climb down, I cut the rebar to the right length, and then curve it on the rebar bender, and then bring it back up and tie it into place. You can see the detail of how I do that in the previous video. Because the span of the vault is so much greater, the engineering drawings call for rebar every six inches in this outer section. Tying would be enough, especially once the concrete holds the rebar in place, but I want the assembly to be a bit more rigid during and before the shoot, so I also welded the connections. For this inside section with the narrower span, I can go back to the 12 inch spacing that we used on the smaller vaults. Quick side story here, when I went to get my plans approved by an official civil engineer, he swapped out all the outer rebar for number 5 rebar at that 12 inch spacing instead of number four at six inch spacing. I asked why and he had no explanation except that it would be easier. So I asked him if he'd ever hand rolled number five rebar to a nice curve. He said he hadn't and I asked him to change it back. I'd much rather curve twice as many number four rebars. Here the kids are just bending down the tie wires. We don't want any wires that might stick up through the concrete because then they'd be exposed to water and oxygen and then they would rust and it would make a hole down into the, into the concrete. They also might poke us. Now we move the scaffold to the dining room vault. It takes a little bit of disassembly and reassembly. Again we use that Adir Pro laser level to set the scaffold level and at the right height. And then we adjust the jack on my jig to put the arch at just the right height relative to the scaffold deck. For simplicity, I had ordered all the steel arches to be the same, but this location is a bit different, so I had to tweak these ones. I actually welded a straight piece of tube steel onto the end of this third one. Now we set up the largest arch, This vault is the same 30 degree width as most of the others, but it is the longest vault and requires an extra steel arch. And now finally here's the smallest arch. This one was cut custom to fit the sidewall and I was pretty happy to see it was a perfect fit because that meant everything was in the right place. You can see the markings for the rebar locations. To mount it, I drilled steel rebar pegs into the wall and then welded the steel arch to the rebar. All the load will be downward so this is sufficient.
Then I add clamps at the markings, place the rebar, and weld things in place. This work was all done during the 4th of July holiday, so we had some friends over to watch the fireworks from our roof. Okay, enough fun, back to work. I toss some diagonal rebar onto each of the vaults just to add some stiffness to prevent racking. So that's the dining room vault done. Next we have two small 15 degree vaults. The heights of these vaults is also different. Here I'm using steel studs to get a reference height and then measuring down from there. That other perpendicular piece of steel has a level attached to it and I used it as a double check for the height of the second arch. This first one aligns with the entrance. These vaults are smaller in terms of the number of pieces of radial rebar and the total number of intersections, but sometimes curving that rebar more tightly is more difficult. The company that curved that steel for us couldn't curve an a radius tight enough for that inner arch. So that is really just a piece of number five rebar that I curved as well as I could. Since the vaults are radial, the circumference and the rebar spacing grows as the radius increases toward that outside edge. I needed to insert extra rebar to keep the spacing under a foot. In this scene, I'm using my Bosch laser level to mark a vertical line to trim these rebar. And finally, here's the last small vault. Pretty much the same, except that I'd let the boys prep and place most of the rebar. All done, and here's my approved inspection. Let's do a walkthrough. This is the south side wall. You can see the vault steel is up and we are prepping to put in the south wall. I plan to gunite the vaults and the wall at the same time, so I'm prepping it all for that one, one event. The bedrooms are off to the east. 
already buried. Everything really centers on that tower. On the west side, we have the dining room and the kitchen vaults. Over here to the south, we have the living room vaults. This little room around the corner is my office. I work from home, so this will be nicer than my current situation. While we were doing all the stuff in this video, Sherry's been busy putting up the scratch coat stucco in here. Back in the dining room and walking through the kitchen toward the mudroom. You can see it has an open concept between these areas. Some of you had asked about why I clipped the corners of these walls. Now you can see that they fit under the vaults. This is the mudroom. Its roof is also formed with steel arches, but it was simple curvature. So we just screwed form boards to the bottom. It was very easy, and then we removed them. The guest room ceiling has compound curvature. It's a toroidal vault, so boards wouldn't work. Lath works because it's much more flexible. And now we go into the tower and then turn left to get into the playroom. There will be a wall on the left to separate this from the guest quarters. This room has three vaults and then there will be a wall on the far side of the playroom on the right. The back door apps has nice views. Eventually we plan to have a patio back here. Let's flip around. run up to the bedroom for another perspective. This is a poor man's drone shot I do by holding up the camera tripod as high above my head as I can. Let's flip over the garage roof to look at things from that side. You can see my little orange Kubota excavator. Has about one third of the power of the John Deere. All right, the next step is forming that south wall. I'll release that video as soon as I can.